this is a very interesting concept uh, to include into our momentarium of uh, vascularized composite alloy transplantation, which include um, phase reconstruction. Uh, I will look through the manuscript and what was uh, interesting uh, to see is the fact that the authors uh, came with the idea of um, providing both sensory as well as motor Rainer version for facial allograft. The concept as uh, it is presented is interesting. Uh, there is a, a very well um, documented cadaver study uh, showing the dissection of the um, uh, plexus, um, cervical plexus, as well as uh, description of the connections of a nerve uh, transfer uh, for restoration of sensory transfer with uh, uh, the cervical plexus into the mental nerve and then with masseter nerve to the buccal branches uh, of the facial nerve. As presented, it uh, in a way looks like it's an easy job. However, um, what uh, is coming back uh, from our cadaver studies in the past in preparation to face transplantation, it is well known that we cannot ever predict uh, what will be the deformity of the patient and as well what uh, kind of access to the donor we will have. We have found from our patient uh, Connie Kalb, uh, who has the first uh, face transplantation performed in the United States in 2008, that following uh, her trauma, the injury, which uh, was done by her husband uh, when he shot her in the face, she lost all of her um, sensory nerves and there was no way, or I would say no room, to connect uh, the um, remnants uh, of the nerves uh, from any other sources. So in uh, terms of providing help for Connie Cup, we were not able uh, really to perform a reconstruction of her sensory losses. In fact, uh, we were taking from the donor phase all sensory nerves uh, which were coming with the facial graft from the donor, including uh, uh, infraorbital uh, nerves, including mental nerves. I would like just to present the pictures which were presented in issue in 2011 of uh, PRS, where uh, this is a, a very good presentation of the uh, three-dimensional uh, graft of Kanikov, uh, where she lost all the sensory nerves. And then, despite the fact that we have not reconstructed sensory nerves, over time, she regained from zero, which is presented here in a violet, to almost normal sensation, uh, which was almost completed between six and eight months after transplantation. The fact that Connie Kalb have a, a full recovery of sensation uh, was uh, something unexpected uh, but uh, real. We have also documented that there are another sources of nerve reconstruction which are available um, and can explain this phenomenon. And these are coming uh, from uh, either the uh, side branches, they may be coming uh, from the vascular pedicle, or they may be coming actually uh, from um, the surrounding tissues and environment in which uh, uh, the facial graft is recovering. What was interesting in the paper was the fact that uh, they have uh, found that uh, um, cervical plexus is uh, only consistent in 100% for two nerves which is great auricular nerve and supraclavicular nerve. However, when it comes to transverse cervical nerve, as well as for lesser occipital nerve, for transverse it's only 50% and for lesser occipital nerve, 20% presence in the um, dissection. So for facial transplantation, a very dramatic procedure, which is taking over 22 hours, we have to be certain what kind of nerves we can expect in the recipient as a potential uh, neurotization for the lacking nerves of the patient. 
I would say that almost in the conclusion that this is a very interesting concept of uh, transferring the nerves. I believe it will be very difficult to do it uh, during the transplant procedure, which is uh, taking a lot of attention just only to get the facial allograft alive and to connect the nerves which are available. As an additional procedure after transplantation, this may be feasible, uh, potentially more for the motor nerve recovery rather than sensory nerve recovery, which we found to be excellent even without captation. And most importantly, the one thing which will be great to learn from the authors is how long it really takes to dissect the cervical plexus. There are a lot of uh, data in uh, the manuscript but uh, I would be interested to know how much of the surgery time will add the dissection of these uh, uh, cervical plexus branches in order to make them available for uh, transplant uh, tissue neurotization. So in summary, a very interesting concept, uh, probably uh, not feasible for simultaneous face transplantation and nerve neurotization and coaptation. There is one more point I would like to make. Then we have a plenty of the donor nerve material when we are harvesting the facial allograft. Uh, in fact, for conical, we have harvested uh, vagus nerve and we have harvested uh, the laryngeal nerve, which uh, help us to uh, coapt the facial allograft uh, uh, with the um, remnants of uh, her facial nerve trunks. So that's another possibility which we have uh, available and during um, um, procurement of the face allograft we can always take additional nerve grafts to have them just as a spare parts which could be used during transplantation. Uh, I would um, vote for rather secondary than primary reconstruction since this seems to be like a difficult, potentially technically procedure uh, to hold them together uh, during face uh, transplantation. Thank you.